I'm William Hain, and I was born uh, June 3rd, 1932, in Mankato, Minnesota. And what did your parents do? My parents were farmers. They had a family of ten. They, and we all helped run the farm. Did any of your other siblings go into the military? I had five brothers besides myself that served in the in uh, in the army or navy. I had one brother drove tank for General Patton in World War Two, and then I was the second one went to Korea, and the other four were in in peacetime, and two in the army, two in the navy. So, did you enlist or were you drafted? I actually was laid off my job, and I was going to be drafted, but I went and volunteered, so I went a month or two earlier because I was out of a job, and I wanted to come back and marry my girlfriend, so <laughs> wanted to get it over with. So. What year did you finish high school? 1950, I graduated Mankato. And when, when did you enlist? 1952, November 4th, 1952, I went in. What branch did you choose? Well, I didn't, I was just drafted, so I went in the Army. You know, I mean, I just volunteered for the draft. You just went a little earlier is all. So some lucky guy got to stay out a couple of months more, so. So it was Army. And what was your uh, unit? Or... Well, I went to I went to basic training in the 87th Infantry uh, down in Fort Riley, Kansas, for four months, and then I was instead of going to Korea, I was sent back there for two more months to get, get mechanic training to be a truck mechanic. Then when I went to Korea, I got transferred what they call SCARWAF. It's a special category of the Air Force. And we built air bases. The uh, Air Force did not have their own engineers. The Army built the air bases at that time. So I was a truck mechanic to keep the trucks running and so that we could, and the trucks were old, trucks from World War II, and they needed a lot of work to keep it going, but we made it and uh, got the job done. When did you go to Korea? When? Uh, so I think I arrived there about the 1st of July. I took the slow boat across the Pacific from San Francisco, went to Japan, got on airplanes, standing room only, and flew to Korea. And Korea had heavy rains, and they couldn't land where they wanted to, so we had to land somewhere else and ride a bus to the base we were on, which was called K-55. It was 40 miles south of Seoul. And Along the way on that bus, there had been a train wreck, and uh, that's something I'll never forget. There was bodies stacked like cordwood that people got killed on that train wreck. I was quite a arrival coming to Korea. Was that civilians or service? They were probably civilians. I have no idea who was on there, but it was a bad one. Something you don't want to see. So, um, how long of a flight was it from Japan? You said standing room only. Well, that, that's not very far. I don't know. I'd say an hour, probably. We all had May Wests and parachutes on in case of emergency. And you, they packed you on there, and you stood up and when you, until you got to Korea. What did you know about Korea before before you went? I never knew there was a Korea till I 
the Korean War started. Never heard of it. Was it very? Was the war very much in the news? I don't. I don't can't remember if it was or not. Well, it must have been in the news before I went in because a lot of people were getting killed. You know. Of course, when I went in the army, we didn't know we were going to go to Korea. You never know where you're going to go. But I did. So where were you based in Korea? At K-55 Air Base at Osan. It was 40 miles south of Seoul. And that was... The temperature was about like living in southern Minnesota. It snowed, and it, but it was not 30, 40 below like North Korea. It was it felt just like home. What were your duties? I was in charge of the motor or the repair shop when I got there. And the war ended two weeks after I got there. Everybody that was there went home, so they put me in charge of the motor pool and. And I think I did a real good job. I keep getting them trucks running. There was probably 10 of them there that didn't run when I took over. And there was, we had one officer left in the company and he told me I should never be working. I should just make the rest of the guys work. But then I, sometimes I did more than I was supposed to. So your role was more leadership, but you had yeah, to be hands-on yeah. anyway. But, and we worked 12 hours a day, seven days a week. The Air Force worked eight hours a day, five days a week. We're right side by side with them. We built Quonset huts for the Air Force to live in, and we lived in tents up on the hill. <laughs> Are there any stories or experiences that stand out to you? Well, I didn't have a lot of exciting things happen, no. I, I guess, uh, you know, we just had tents with little pot-bellied stoves in the wintertime, and uh, the stoves would soot up. And a lot of people were cold at night. Since I was in the motor pool, we would sneak a little gas up there and mix it with that fuel oil, and our furnace, our little pot-bellied stoves burnt pretty good, cleaner than with just oil in them. So we all survived. I was, we had eight men in a tent, and I don't think we lost anybody while I, in our group while I was there. What kind of friendships or camaraderie did you form through your time in the service? Well, I had some close, pretty close friends. That, uh, one was, I was in charge of the trucks and another friend of mine from Kansas, uh, Dwight Ensley, he was in charge of the industrial equipment. And uh, we became close friends and I haven't, he hasn't come to see me and I haven't, I've got his phone number once, but nobody, somebody else answered the number I had off the computer. He lives down Kansas or somewhere now, or Missouri, I ain't sure, but I haven't been able to get a hold of him. I thought if I go to Branson sometime, I'd go look him up, but I haven't found him, so. But, uh, in the, you know, we had, I had four Korean citizens working for me, two young boys and two older men. And so we had, they helped fix trucks and change tires and stuff like that. That was quite a experience. And I didn't learn to speak any Korean, but we could still communicate with whatever language we were speaking, so. That uh, 
Then I had one Korean young guy was is standing in front of the f wood or the furnace once outside we heated the shop with and his pants caught a fire. I just happened to come in there at that moment and he was running down the road with his pants on fire. <laughs> I ran after him, but I had a when I caught him, I had a one-piece Air Force uniform on, so I couldn't get a jacket off. And another guy come and handed me a shirt, and we got the fire put out. But his legs were burnt pretty bad. That's the worst experience I've seen over there, as far as somebody getting hurt. So. When did you rotate home? A year later, I the. Army tour of duty was 18 months. The Air Force was 12 months, so I only had to stay 12 months. And then I come home, and we got married, and we went back to Fort Carson, Colorado, and that's where most of the people that I went in the Army with originally come getting discharged out. I've seen quite a few of them as they come through there going home. When they got back from Korea, they got out early, when they got up, that was good. But since I come back four months early, I had to put in every last day of my two years. <laughs> when you came back home right after being in Korea, what, what was it like? What was the reception like? There was no reception. No, nope, we didn't see the Red Cross or nothing. I didn't, it was nothing like I think today it's changed, but I know, well, I was, when we were at Fort Carson, Colorado, her grandfather died, and I went to the Red Cross to try to get emergency leave to come home for her funeral. They refused to help me. I went to my first sergeant, told him the story, and we were on our way home right now. So, Believe it or not, the Red Cross is not always there to help you. <laughs> you were in Korea when the war ended. Yeah. What, what did it feel like? I, was, I didn't see nothing, no celebrations or nothing. It just, it ended, that was, That was it. Well, I, you know, the, the truth the, the truth is a lot, there was a lot of battles going on even after it ended, I read about today, and I'm sure. So, and it, it's sad that North Korea is, if you read about it, it's not a good place to be yet. But them South Korean people, we've made South Korea into a wonderful country, and the South Koreans are ever so grateful for what we've done for them, and they're just, everyone I've ever met has got nothing but good to say about us. So what do you think about uh, U.S.-Korean relations? Oh, I think they're great. You know, that we've, we've made a great country out of their country and it's just as good as the United States. You can go to McDonald's over there and Burger King and a lot of other places. It's just sad that we had to kill 35,000 Americans to accomplish this. And how many South Koreans we killed, I have no idea, but it's, I'm totally against wars. How has your time in the military and at war, how has that affected your feelings towards military and war? Well, I don't, that's, I don't like wars, but I mean, I have no, no bad, real bad feelings about it. It's, we've got to protect our country and try to, I'm glad I served. I took two years out of my life and but that's General turned out for the better. 
So when you were in Korea just following the war, what did it, what did it look like there? Well, I didn't see no battles where I was. I was out of the battle zone. I was on this Air Force base. And I seen no fighting, no shooting. I didn't see any of that. What did, like, landscape or towns, what was life like? <clears throat> well, I don't think any of the little towns, they just had little shacks they lived in, and I don't think, I don't think there was such a thing as even a restaurant in a town. And when I went to Seoul, I went scrounging parts several times, and I went up to Seoul, and they had some big buildings at that time, but they were all bombed up. You could, uh, no roofs on them or anything. It, uh, it was a really sad to see that. And there was no ice cream where I was. And one time, uh, somebody radioed down that they were coming from Seoul and they were bringing ice cream and we should all be ready to eat it. But before they got there, the ice cream had all melted. So, <laughs> so I didn't see ice cream for a year. Have you been back to Korea since? No, I have not been back to Korea. I, I really had no desire to go back. I, I asked. I understand from the men that have went back that it's really great. And I have seen a lot of pictures. Of, you wouldn't know if you were looking at a, one of our cities or not. So it's, I think it's a great place to live, you know, for them. And How did your uh, wartime experiences affect your life in general? Well... I don't think they really done me any harm. I, like I say, when I left, I was out of a job, and uh, when I went back home, there was no jobs available either. So it took me about. Well, I just started working at a gas station for a guy, and then I had another gas station come up for lease, so I leased that and I run that for a year and a half, and the, it wasn't what I didn't think I wanted to do the rest of my life, so I, another guy wanted to buy it, so I let him have it, and I went to the employment office, sent me up to a can company that makes tin cans, and I eventually got a job there and I stayed there for 39 years so turned out great so were you farming and working at that job at the same time that's several times or I sold out farming once and then I started up farming again and uh, and then when my son got out of high school he took over the farm so he's still farming today and we own some land and Things are great. What life lessons do you feel like you learned through military service? I never had any any problems. And, uh, of course, I was raised to work hard and be responsible on the farm and coming from a large family. And we were poor and you had to work. and. And I guess it just carried through into the Army. I think I did my job well, and I have no regrets. And I had never had a desire to re-enlist. <laughs> but I lost several, my best friend, plus several other good friends of mine that lost their lives over there, and that's, that's the part I don't like. Can you share about any of them? Or how, like how you knew them, or? Well, I had a neighbor, Nick Frederick was a, lived about a half a mile from us, and he, he was a fifth child born in a family of nine. I was a fifth in a family of 10. He was two weeks older than me, and 
And uh, we went to high school together, and we went in the Army together. Since I volunteered for the draft, I got to go the month he went, and we went through basic training together and became the best of friends. And and when we got ready to leave to go to Korea with our rifles, he said, uh, or he, I got kept back go to mechanic school by the grace of God. I don't know what else, but... And he had the premonition that he would not come back, so it was hard to say goodbye to each other when we parted company. And he went over there, and he was killed a couple of weeks after he got to Korea. And that's a part of something I never forgot, don't ever want to forget. <clears throat> I visit him regularly. And I've had 60 years of a great life, and he's had nothing. And I've, I'm totally against wars. Is there anything else that I haven't asked that you wanted to share? Did I talk about the Koreans that I meet today? Did I say anything about them? Um, I mean, you just said that they're great people. But if yeah, well, I, we have many college students that are come from Korea and I get them to give speeches Memorial Day and Veterans Day and and they are they became good friends of ours and they don't we don't forget them and they don't forget us and they're forever grateful for what we done for their country and it's just a great feeling that they feel that way toward us so